welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, I'm the author of the book that actually inspired this uh, series. Um, I'm going to be here every day with an On This Day in Tudor History event. Now, taking you back to the year 1500 and actually outside of England today, for on the 24th of February 1500, Charles V, Holy Roman Emperor, was born in the city of Ghent. Now, Ghent is today in the country that we call Belgium, but back then it was in the Habsburg Netherlands. Now, Charles V may not have been a Tudor, um, but he was a contemporary of King Henry VIII, and he was a very powerful man who at times was Henry VIII's ally and at other times was his enemy because, of course, Henry VIII sometimes um, was making alliances with Francis I of France, uh, sometimes with the empire and playing people off against each other as well. So because it's Charles V's uh, birthday today, I thought I'd share some facts about this Holy Roman Emperor. Now, Charles was the eldest son of Philip I of Castile, who was also known as Philip the Handsome, and Philip's wife, Juana of Castile, or Joanna, as we've uh, anglicised her. Now, Juana has gone down in history as Juana la Loca, or Juana the Mad. And there's controversy over whether she really deserves to be called Juana the Mad, but uh, I'll leave that to another time. Now, Charles's um, maternal grandparents were the famous Catholic monarchs, the Catholic Reyes, Isabella I of Castile and Ferdinand II of Aragon. His paternal grandparents were Maximilian I, the Holy Roman Emperor, and his wife Mary of Burgundy. Now, this meant that Charles was actually the heir of three very important and powerful dynasties, um, the Valois of Burgundy, the Habsburgs of Austria, and the Trastamaras of Spain. So, you know, his, he became a powerful man because of the fact that he was the heir of these, you know, three really big powerhouses. Um, because he was uh, the grandson of Isabella I of Castile, Ferdinand II of Aragon, and the son of Juana, he was the nephew of Catherine of Aragon, who, of course, was the first wife of King Henry VIII. Of course, uh, Charles was put in quite a predicament, I suppose, when Catherine of Aragon was seeking his support um, for the fact that she was opposed to King Henry VIII's plans to annul his marriage to her. It was Charles V and his links to the Pope, and that made it hard for Henry VIII to get his uh, longed-for annulment. Now, one of uh, Charles V's tutors uh, when he was young um, was Adrian of Utrecht, who became Pope Adrian VI. At the age of 21, Charles became betrothed to five-year-old Princess Mary, who was the daughter of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, so, you know, he was related to her. However, the betrothal came to nothing because in 1525, and the bells are ringing out for this marriage, um, Charles V married Isabella of Portugal. So he didn't go on to marry Mary. But, of course, Mary I eventually, in 1554, married Charles's son, Philip of Spain. So there is a link there. Now, Charles and Isabella spent their honeymoon at the Alhambra Palace in Granada in Spain. And actually, Charles commissioned um, a building of a palace there, what's known as the Charles V Palace today, and building work began in 1527, and you can visit his palace today at the Alhambra. He had seven children by Isabella, including Philip II of Spain, who went on to marry Mary I, and he also had some illegitimate children from mistresses as well. Charles V was a Catholic, a very staunch Catholic, and he was opposed to the reformed ideas that began to spread around his empire. 
and this led to him outlawing uh, reformer Martin Luther, and he also outlawed the Lutheran Schmalkaldic League as well. Now, he was king of Spain as Charles I. He was Charles V as Holy Roman Emperor, but he was King Charles I of Spain from 1516 to 1556, and Holy Roman Emperor as Charles V from 1519 to 1556. Now, he abdicated from those roles in 1556 and retired to a monastery and spent his last two years in a monastery. He left his Holy Roman Empire in the hands of his brother, who became um, Ferdinand I, and he left other territories to his son, Philip II, who became King of Spain as Philip II. Now, Charles had lots and lots of territories. He was also Duke of Burgundy, Lord of the Netherlands, and Count Palatine of Burgundy, a very powerful man. And in fact, his his territories uh, amounted to such a large empire um, that it was said that the he had the empire on which the sun never sets. It was that big. It, it took over a lot of uh, what is today Western Europe. I mean, obviously, he didn't have France and there were various bits and pieces he didn't have, but it was a huge empire because of the fact that he had inherited from, you know, these three different uh, dynasties. Now, Charles suffered from an enlarged jaw, and this is very prominent on the portraits that you see of him. Uh, This pronounced jawline became known as the Habsburg jaw. He also suffered from epilepsy, uh, from gout, and in fact, this, this problem with gout led to him being carried around on a special chair in later life. He died on the 21st of September 1558 at the age of 58 from malaria. So he's a very interesting man because he was a contemporary of Henry VIII and also nephew of Catherine of Aragon and because he was so powerful and had such a large empire. So that's Charles I who was born on this day in Tudor history, the 24th of February 1500. Now you can subscribe to this channel by just clicking there and you can hit the bell to be notified as well because I'm going to be doing these videos on a daily basis so uh, you need to make sure that you don't miss out on any. I'm so glad you're enjoying this series. I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye bye.